You must know your history, and we say that the job of the enemy is to confuse you in presenting history. When they present Dr. King's contribution to us as a people, most people in America, being unconscious of history and its processes, they actually think that one of King's, of King's greatest contribution to us as a people was nonviolence. King's greatest contribution to us to our, as a people was he taught us how to face the enemy without fear. That's Kwame Ture, and this is Alternative Radio. This edition of AR features Kwame Ture on black history. History is often written by the dominant group. Black history is refracted through the narrow lens of those who own the cameras. To some, African-American leaders of the 1960s, people like Malcolm X, Huey P. Newton, Bobby Seale, Angela Davis, and Stokely Carmichael, were menacing ideologues. To others, they were icons in the struggle against white supremacy. Stokely Carmichael was born in Trinidad. His family moved to New York. He joined the civil rights movement in the early 1960s while still a student at Howard University. A hard-working field organizer and charismatic speaker, he became chair of SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Impatient with the slowness of change, Carmichael sent shockwaves throughout the civil rights movement and the white establishment with his electrifying call for black power. What do you want? Everybody, what do you want? We want black power. We want black power. That's what we're going to get. He left SNCC in 1967 and became prime minister of the Black Panther Party. Two years later, he moved to Guinea in West Africa. He changed his name in honor of his political heroes, Ahmed Sekou Toure of Guinea and Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana. From his new base, he advocated Pan-African unity through the All-African People's Revolutionary Party. Kwame Toure died at the age of 57 in November 1998. Although in exile for decades, he frequently visited the United States. The lecture you are about to hear was recorded at Metro State College in Denver. Of course, when we talk of uh, history, we have to understand precisely what it is. Uh, in a capitalist system, uh, history is used to demobilize the people. Of course, history is like anything, like religion, it's a weapon. It can be used by the slave master to make you accept slavery or it can be used by Nat Turner to cut off the head of the slave master. So, just like it can be used uh, for good purposes or bad purposes, history can be used for good purposes or for bad purposes. So anytime an enemy has a people that he's seeking to control, the first thing the enemy will do is not control their history, but control their understanding of history. For example, if you would look at the United States of America in its presentation of history, it presents history as something dead in the past, made by one great man or one great woman. For example, if you ask students in America, high school students, or even college students, anything about what's considered to be American history, the best they can give you is a date, a name, and something. I mean, you ask them about the American Revolution, tell you uh, 1776, George Washington, and uh, Boston Tea Party, or something like that. <laughs> you ask them about the Civil War, say, oh, 1861, was it 62, 63, uh, Jefferson, Lee, and oh, Lincoln, yes, of course. <laughs> Even in the 60s, Malcolm X, um, maybe, but at least Martin Luther King. So when history is presented, it's presented something dead, something in the past. This presentation demobilizes the people from the very beginning. In the first instance, history is studied as something in the past, with dates, and it's made by a great man or a great woman, so you're not a great man or a great woman, so you can't make history, so you do not even try to make history. So when we speak of history, we who are revolutionary, we must inform you that we know that history is made by every human being and that every human being makes history just like we do anything in life, one of two ways, either consciously or unconsciously. 
but every human being makes history. For example, if I'm an unconscious African, I might go and fight in Baghdad. By fighting in Baghdad, I'm making history. Not my history, and not that history against my history. But nonetheless, I'm making history. While you sit and carry out the values of a system which seeks to make itself eternal, as do all systems in all countries, as in the case of the United States of America, you are making the history of America. So we say everybody makes history. But the capitalist system is a system that lies not some of the time, but all of the time. When it tells the truth, it's a result of a double lie. So when we talk about history, we have to change everything. Oh, so I tell you, history is not something in the past, not days. It's happening all the time. We are making history right here. Yes. Because in history, there are two aspects that people come to struggle for. To change the conditions of life, but also for the immaterial aspect of life. They struggle for ideas. And every day, there's a battle for ideas. I mean, a real battle for ideas. And these ideas have an effect upon your life. For example, let me give you an example. You go home and they will sing you a Coca-Cola jingle, you know, get Coke or whatever it is, buy Coke or Coke is good, whatever it is. And you'll hear the jingle all the time, it's a battle for ideas. Because when you get thirsty, you know what you will say, give me a Coke. <laughs> and you'll think you thought of it yourself. <laughs> yeah, so there's a constant battle all the time for ideas. And in societies, the battle is constant, even among human beings, even you as students. There's a constant battle between you, to be honest, or to be dishonest, to cheat on the test, or not to cheat on the test. So history is being made all the time, and one of the things you must know about history is the people who make history, the mass of the people, I mean the illiterate people, I mean the people who can't think people, I mean these are the only people who make history. Uh, the example uh, is uh, easy with George Washington. You know, if you put George Washington by himself in the middle of the Valley Forge, surrounded by the British, bad as he is, ain't nothing he can do. <laughs> Hope he knows how to swim underwater. <laughs> but if you take thousands of people who believe in the same idea George Washington believes in, that where there's no representation, there should be no taxation, and those people are prepared to do everything possible to make this idea a reality, the situation changes. What changes the situation is not George Washington, but the thousands of the masses of people who come to fight for justice. Now, you must understand one thing about history. History must be made by human beings. Hear me well. Human beings have instincts like animals of the lower form, but we also have something that animals do not have. We can reason. We can think. Of course, if you don't think, you act like an animal. That's clear. The more you think, the less like an animal you act. But human beings have an instinct which animals of the lower form do not have. They have an instinctive love of justice. I mean, and when they are oppressed, this intensifies, and this love of justice, I mean, they will struggle. Until the last one is left, they will continue to struggle. I mean, of course, I know the history that's given to you is shows backward, but if you look at it, you can see it. Look, I know you hear today in the newspaper some problem occurring in Ireland and Britain, you know, and that every time there's a bomb here, and the Irish are just terrorists, you know, they're always bombing the good British, you know. The British have been terrorized everywhere. But... If you go back to history, you will see that this problem is 800 years old. Did you know that? You see how America handles the news? Just like a commercial. Did you know that struggle that you hear about with the Margaret Thatcher being bombed, this one being bombed, this uh, one stealing guns in America to send to Ireland, this Joe Darby being in jail, and they don't want to... Uh, do you know all this? Did you know it was 800 years old? How many people know the fight is 800 years old? I'm telling the truth. You must see it for yourself. This is an 800-year-old struggle. And you know what? I promise you, if the British stay in Irish for 800 more years, the Irish will fight them for 800 more years. Wherever there's oppression, there's resistance. 